Good evening. Uh, we thank you for joining us tonight. We're continuing to look at the penitent Psalms as we lead up to Easter, and tonight we're in Psalms 51. Psalms 51 is pretty familiar to most people. Uh, the backdrop is that David has sinned. He's committed adultery with Bathsheba. He's had her husband killed, and he has been confronted by Nathan the prophet. And then he begins to pour his heart and his soul out to God. He begins to repent and he asks for restoration and restores joy and renew the right spirit and all those things. And, and we're gonna run through those this evening uh, in our time together. So let's go to verse one of Psalms 51. David says here, "'Have mercy on me because of your unfailing love, because of your great compassion, blot out the stain of my sin. I, I want to point out that right here, when David first makes this request to have mercy on me, he, he says it based on the mercy and the unfailing love of God. I'm glad it's not our qualification that gets us forgiveness or right standing with God. He says, blot out the stain of my sin. Stains are reminders of things that have happened in the past. Now, let's be honest. I've got some clothes, particularly maybe a shirt or two, that have some, quote, permanent stains on them that uh, are reminders of whether I was painting or I was working with something greasy. Uh, and, and they're in such a condition that it won't come out. Now, the shirt is still fully functional, and I will use them, but uh, I'm only allowed to use them <laughs> under certain criteria. Uh, you know, they would be a no-no if we were going out in public. And yet, that's a lot like our lives. Some of the stains we have in our life from sin are public knowledge for all the world to see. But I would argue that most of the, the sin stain, as it were, the things that we wrestle with and struggle with, are private. And, or we keep them private. We keep them at home. We don't put them out on display. And yet, David's sin has become... Uh, very public. He's been challenged now, but cat's out of the bag, as it were, when Nathan came to him and said, you're the man. And so he begins to pour out to God. Look at verse two. He says, wash me clean from my guilt and purify me from my sin. Do you think guilt is always associated with sin? Do you think that's a across the board issue? Do some people struggle more and some people struggle less uh, with guilt? I'm, I'm just curious, what what are your thoughts? Guilt can be simply that I ate the donut and I was not supposed to because I've been on a diet. Um, that's You feel guilty because you indulged in that, but that's not necessarily a sin. Right, and so there are times I'm convinced when guilt enters our consciousness, as it were, because of sin, and I think oftentimes that the Holy Spirit allows that, uses that to nudge us to get back in right relationship, to, to make those things right, to repent as it were. And so then verse three, he says, for I recognize my rebellion. The word there literally means my transgression or my sin. I, I, I recognize and acknowledge what I've done. Is that hard for us to do sometimes when we have messed up? Yes. Why do you think that is? Why, why is that such an issue for us? It's just tough to admit when we're wrong and when we've done something we shouldn't. I agree. And, uh, you know, it's, it's one thing for me to confess to God and acknowledge my sin and my wrongdoing. It's an entirely different thing for me to acknowledge them and confess them to other people uh, because you're, you're afraid of retaliation, perhaps. You're afraid of, of being embarrassed. You're afraid of what they may think of you when in fact, when we open up and we acknowledge our sin, our wrongdoings, our faults, our failures, our transgressions, ever how you want to categorize them, the truth of the matter is we usually gain credibility by being honest. And David does that here. He says, I recognize my rebellion. And notice, it haunts me day and night. I've had things in my past where I did something, said something, or I failed to say or do something that I should have, that it, quote, haunted me continuously until I made it right with God. 
Now, there have been occasions when I had to go a step beyond making things right with God, and I had to make things right with other people. And, and David said, it, it haunts me day and night. He said, against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done evil in your sight. You will be proved right in what you say in your judgment against me is right. The word of God, the spirit of God, the presence of God is always right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we sin uh, as David did, perhaps not on that level, but some of the things that we do that are contrary to the word of God, the will of God are intentional. Sometimes they're not intentional, but we always know that the word of God is right. The instructions, the standards that he set are absolutely right and we can and should live by those. And he says, your judgment against me is right. Now that's, that's a big confession. Not only did he, did he say, I recognize my sin, my rebellion, I take, I take responsibility for it. He said, but if you choose to judge me because of it, if I have to, to go through something or deal with something, and he did, he said, then that's right and that's just too because the truth of the matter is scripture teaches us that we've all sinned, we've all fallen short of, of the glory of God um, and we deserve the death penalty as it were, the, the very thing that Jesus paid the price for our sin debt. Then he goes on in verse five, he says, for I was born a sinner, yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. I don't think any of us would argue that. You don't have to teach children to be wrong, to be ugly, to be selfish, to be greedy, to lie. It, it is born in our sin nature. He said, but you desire honesty from the womb, teaching me wisdom even there. Purify me from my sin and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. I couldn't help but think as I was reading that um, recently, you were uh, showing me some of my, my t-shirts, my white t-shirts that you had recently washed and they were, they were somewhat white when, when they went in, but something happened in the wash and they came out not white, but gray. Yeah. Wouldn't you say kind of a dingy, yeah, kind of a dingy <laughs> dull gray color. But David says here, if you do this, if, if you wash me, he said, I'll be whiter than snow. It's hard to even conceive of something being whiter than snow. Mm -hmm. When snow falls and it blankets the earth, uh, how beautiful it is. He says, give me back my joy again. You have broken me, now let me rejoice. And he's longing for, for that joy and the peace and contentment that he once knew, that he lost during his time of willful sin and rebellion away from God, and he desires to have that back. He says, don't keep looking at my sins, but remove the stain of my guilt. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right and loyal spirit in me. A clean heart and a right spirit in me. Those things are priceless. To have a clean heart, to have a clean conscience, and to have a right spirit in us. Do you ever find in your own personal life, and, and, and I'm, I'm going to speak for myself, that sometimes when you're not perhaps in right relationship with God as much as you could or should be, for whatever the reason, it may not have been something huge, or it may have been, but until that is made right, do you find it even more difficult to be in right relationship with other people? Sure. Yeah, because one affects the other. They're, they're tied together. And he goes on, do not banish me from your presence and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. We know through scripture that it teaches us that the Holy Spirit is our comforter. He's our teacher. He's our guide. Uh, he's, he's a lot of things. And David is saying, of all the things in the world, of all the punishment that could come my way, he said, the worst thing I could think of is if you banished me from your presence and your Holy Spirit, his influence was taken away from me. I can think of no greater motivator like David that we come to God with the small things, the big things, to keep a clean heart, to allow him to wash us, to be whiter than the snow, to be in right relationship so that we are constantly in his presence and that the Holy Spirit is there leading and guiding us. He says, 
Restore unto me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. Then I will teach your ways to rebels and they will return to you. And I truly believe what David's saying here is when you have restored me, I'm back in right standing, right relationship. My heart's right, my mind's right, my spirit's right. He said, I'm going to share my story with other people, my testimony. Um, your personal testimony, my testimony is our greatest witness. Where I have been, where I have struggled, where God has delivered me, where he's rescued me, where he has forgiven me. And David said, when you do that, Lord, I'm going to be faithful to tell my story to other people because other people are desperate to hear your story because they may have the very same similar need or struggle and they need to hear your story. He says, forgive me for shedding blood, O God who saves, then I will joyfully sing of your forgiveness. Unseal my lips, O Lord, that my mouth may praise you. You do not desire sacrifice or I would offer one. You do not want a burnt offering. And he's saying, you don't want me to go through religious routines. You know, it's not about going to church a certain amount of time and giving a certain amount of money or, or doing a certain amount of community uh, service and then I'm going to get back in right relationship. He said, it's not about those things. Those things in, the, in themselves in the right place are good. Right. He said, but that's not what you're after. You're after me. You're, you're after a, a renewed and restored relationship. He says, the sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart. Oh God, that is comforting to me. And I want it to be comfort to you, no matter where you have been, what you have done, no matter how bad you have fallen, no matter how deep in sin you may have been or are. Just like David, he said, God will not reject a broken and repentant heart. And when we humble ourselves and come back, mm -hmm. it's, it's a done deal. Those stains, the things that, that like on my shirt for the tide pin wouldn't do the job. The blood of Jesus just washes it white as snow. And, and that's a great comfort. He says, look with favor on Zion or Jerusalem and help her and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. David understood that his sins affected other people. And other people were struggling and suffering because of the choices and decisions that he made. And we have a responsibility not only to ourselves, certainly to God, but to other people as well. He says, then you will be pleased with sacrifices offered in the right spirit, with burnt offerings and with whole burnt offerings. Then will bulls again be sacrificed on your altar. He said, those religious activities, the things that, that we think are so important, he said, those things will once again find their proper place. But first things first. And so as we have looked at this psalm tonight and we're getting ready to close with prayer i want to encourage you and to challenge you that the grace of god the forgiveness of god is available to you and as david when you acknowledge and you take responsibility you bring it before god you pour out your heart to him there is absolutely nothing that is too big too difficult too ugly too dirty that the grace and the mercy and the forgiveness of God will not take care of and wash away those stains. And as David said, he will create in you a clean heart, renew a right spirit. And what a great gift that's been made available Amen. to us. Join us as we pray. Almighty God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for reminding us of the power of your mercy and your grace and your forgiveness. Thank you that when we call out to you as David did and we humble ourselves, we acknowledge our sin, that you are ready to forgive. And not only to forgive us, but you are ready to restore the joy of your salvation that you have given to us. You are ready to cleanse our hearts, our minds, our emotions, our spirits. And when you do, may we be faithful to tell our story to other people, to share the love and the grace and the forgiveness that you offer to other people who so desperately need it. Thank you for the work that you've done for the gift of your son, and thank you, Jesus, for giving your life for us. All these things we pray and give thanks now in Jesus' name. Amen.
God bless you and thank you for joining us.